This might shock you all, but I love micro four thirds. And I thought it was about damn time I made a video going through all the reasons why I love the system and why you might too. We're going fancy today. I've got a top down camera now, guys going up in the world. So first of all, lens choices. Let's talk about the lenses. Not only do we have our lovely Lumix goodness and our lovely Olympus goodness, what you would consider the quote unquote official Micro Four Thirds lenses. We also have a plethora of third party lenses like Sigma and TT Artisans. Look at, look at this one. Ooh. And Lauer and Maker. We have so many brands to choose from and all different price points. One of the reasons I love Micro Four Thirds lenses is you can go out with a body cap lens that's like £30 or you can go out with a proper cinema lens that's very, very expensive. We also have our more budget primes which cater for the size and the portability. But then on the other end of the spectrum we have the pro lenses like this Olympus f1.2 25mm. Absolutely stunning piece of glass. So you can create a kit that is as big or as small as you like. There really is a lens for every occasion with this setup. And I love that is the same with the camera bodies as well. You've got your bigger, more professional grade bodies like the Lumix GH6, but then you also have the smaller ones like the Olympus PL6. And you can go out on a weekend and shoot this one for fun and then go and actually do some paid work with the more expensive kit and all of the lenses work with all of the systems. If you're like me and you like to try different lenses and different camera bodies over time, I have spent the last six years trying out tons of different lenses, as you'll know on this channel, and I don't think I've even scratched the surface. Every other day in the comments, someone's like, have you tried this? And I'm like, no, I need to add that to my list, <laughs> my ever-growing list. So if you like a camera system with lots of options at all different price points, this is the one for you. Another benefit of most of the lenses, not all, but most of them, is comparing them to their full frame or APS-C counterparts. The Micro Four Thirds lenses are much, much smaller. This has huge benefits for travel and being incognito and just being able to take a camera out where otherwise you couldn't quite be bothered because the weight and the bulk of it was a bit too much. You can absolutely get smaller camera bodies on other systems, but you have to really pair it with the lens and see the overall package for it to make sense as a small piece of kit. One thing that the smaller overall package does enable you to do is to either travel very light, I either have a very small bag with just one camera and one lens in it, or it gives you the opportunity to put a few more choices in your bag. It's win-win. You have more things to experiment with or you have a very low form factor to deal with when you're out and about. With full frame, it isn't the case. You can go out with a relatively minimalist kit, but as soon as you wanna take more than one lens, things do get bigger and bulkier very quickly. With Micro Four Thirds, on the other hand, you can literally get a handful of lenses out and about with you. Try doing that with full frame. <laughs> I've literally had to take out all of the dividers and all I fit now in the bag is the camera. <laughs> if you're coming from Micro Four Thirds or a smaller system, you'll definitely need a new camera bag. Reason 5078 while Micro Four Thirds is amazing, the kit grows with your abilities. You may begin with a smaller, fun camera to be out and about with. You may start with a smaller pancake lens, which gets you out and about and gets you learning the ropes of photography or videography. In the same weekend, I could be out with my fully kitted out rig on one day doing a paid job, and then the next day I could be out with the PL6 having a bit of fun. It really is very cool. Aspect ratio. I love the four by three aspect ratio. You could possibly emulate it with other camera systems, but you would be losing pixels rather than gaining them. So I think shooting in a native aspect ratio is always best. I think that crop is something a little bit different, a little bit eye-catching. And for video, with using open gate features, it's incredibly good for social media because you can crop in and use the, the extra headroom that we have with four by three to your advantage. Micro Four Thirds is great at longer focal lengths. Look at this. This is a 70 to 200 full frame equivalent. It's absolutely dinky and it's internal focusing as well, so it doesn't even extend beyond that. And then we have the 100 to 400 Micro Four Thirds lens, which is 200 to 800 mil in full frame terms, and you can carry it around like this. I've done a few videos about this lens and wildlife setup recently, so do check them out on the channel. If you are wanting to use more of a zoom within your photography, whether it's for live bands or for wildlife or sports, you don't have to break your back or your bank 
in order to do so because the two times crop with the sensor works in your favor. There's a lot more technology packed into these smaller sensors if you think about it. We have handheld high res modes, we have incredible stabilization, we have incredibly fast burst modes and live composite modes and 4k photo modes. There's a heck of a lot of technology in these smaller sensors and they are a lot more advanced than people give them credit for. And the same goes for the video side with your micro four thirds sensor as well. You can get 4k 120p without any crop and you can get very, very high bit rates without the cameras overheating and without any issues at all. And when you think about it, the GH5, which is six years old now and my vertical camera today, it was so before its time, it had 4K 60p without any crop. And then it took a long, long time for full frame cameras, certainly at that price point, to catch up. So with the GH6, we have that innovation again, where we do have 120 frames a second in 4K without a crop. It's just showing off. Thank you so much to MPV for sponsoring this video. Now, it might come as a shock to you guys, but I love camera equipment. <laughs> so if you would like to try the Micro Four Thirds system, perhaps you are already in the system, perhaps you have a smaller one and would prefer to try a bigger one, perhaps I've been so persuasive you're ready to trade in your Canon equipment and join the winning team, <laughs> then you should definitely check out MPB. MPB is the largest online platform for buying, selling and trading your camera equipment. So if there's anything that you find you don't take out as much as you used to, or if there's anything that's catching your eye that you're would like to try, why not trade it in with MPB and give your camera equipment a bit of a spruce? I particularly like if there's something that's on my radar that I'm not quite in a hurry to buy, I could set up email alerts to tell me when things are in stock and I can check the price and check the condition and see if I'm ready to buy at that point. So check them out on the website. I've linked the UK, EU and American sites below. They are an international company and see if you can find something that you'd like to try. This one is controversial and I would love to know if there is science behind it, but it's mostly anecdotal. But here we go. I believe that the Micro Four Thirds lenses are sharper than full frame equivalents. <gasps> I've done a lot of pixel peeping in my time and I find even an affordable Micro Four Thirds lens tends to be sharp to the edges, tends to be very, very easy to crop into because there's lots of detail and pixel density. I think they are absolutely above and beyond a lot of their full frame counterparts. I'm not saying that sharp full frame lenses don't exist because of course they do. But I'm saying you can generally get higher quality lenses for less money on the Micro Four Thirds system. You can also get very crazy lenses, different focal lengths that don't exist on full frame systems because of the crop sensor. Or you can get different focal lengths that you can get on full frame but are like the price of a house. <laughs> For instance, the 25 to 100 millimeter pro lens on the Lumix system. Is it built like a tank? Is it massive? Yes. But is there a full frame equivalent? There isn't. And the Micro Four Thirds system is great for hybrid shooters. If you like photo and video, if you dabble more in one than the other, getting a camera system that's very, very good at both at a very good price point is very attainable on Micro Four Thirds. So there are just some of the many reasons why I love the Micro Four Thirds system. If you think I've missed anything off, do let me know in the comments. And watch this video next where I compare Micro Four Thirds and full frame for wildlife photography.